Leadership is a very scarce resource. Demand is high, supply is low. Therefore, where do you want to be? We got a scarce resource called leadership. It's in high demand and low supply. What does that say about economic opportunity? Is economic opportunity good or bad to be in the leadership game? It's really good. You can command, okay, if you can fill the void. So the question becomes, what is it that we want in a leader? And I'm gonna to talk to you about the six or seven things that I think are key to a leader, but I'm telling you from an economic fundamentals point of view, this is a huge moment for anyone that wants to get into business and lead because there's nothing to suggest that for the next seven to 12 years, those economics will change. Think about it. And then think about what you could do to enhance your own personal economic value in the kind of market that we're in. So leadership is about answers. Leadership today and since 2008, this big economic downturn, the worst in 70 years, all right? Leadership is about answers to old questions. It's also about answers to new questions. And the easiest way to think, in my mind, about what's going on is there's this enormous race to see who's gonna get the answers first. Now, it ain't gonna be the guys on Mahogany Row, so it's gonna be somebody else. But there's a huge race on to come up with new answers, to old questions and new answers to new questions. Why? Phil, why? What is it? Why is leadership about answers? Any idea? Because you want the best answer? Yeah, it, okay. Notice he used the word best. He could have used the word right. Had he said the right answer, I'd have said wrong answer. There is no right answer. How many right answers are there to any business challenge? Multiple, unlimited. Yeah, somebody's got to answer the stakeholders. Somebody's got to answer, someone's accountable. Someone's got to be held accountable. And what do people hate? Uncertainty. What do we crave? Certainty. What do we want? Answers. Do we want complexifiers or simplifiers as leaders? What do we want? Simplifiers. You want simplifiers. What do you want? You want the leader that can take this great complexity, reduce it to very simple terms so that we, the humble, can digest it. Those are the kind of answers we're looking for. We're not looking for answers shrouded in mystery and Gantt charts and spreadsheets and all sorts of that's the one I'd into that. Because there is no one right answer. Do you think Steve Jobs ever focused in on one right answer? What, what, what made him a great leader? The pursuit of the next right answer, and the next right answer, and the next right answer. What creates that? What's the psychological profile of someone who's in search of the next right answer, and even when they find the answer, don't even stop to smell the roses, they're impatient to get on to the next one. What is that? What is that personality type? Go ahead. Driven, Driven. yep. Um, curiosity. curiosity, huge, on my list, huge thing for leadership, absolutely. Proactive. Sorry? Proactive. Proactive, yep. I think there's also a bit of like selfishness, especially with Steve, just because he always wanted to be the best, and he needed his like app, he wanted Apple to be the best it could be. So even though he made simple products, he really strove to like do the best of what he did. Yeah, sure. And driven by what? Let's dig deep. Let's dig deep into the brain cells. Go ahead. Uh, critical thinking. Uh, yeah, that's 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 the tool to bring it out. Let me give you the word: chronic discontent. Emotional hemorrhoids, a constant itch. Why? Why? Why are the really great leaders today in particular, because we live in a chaotic, 
unpredictable world, why does chronic discontent have such a high market value? It's, dri it's drive, it's about being driven for sure. It's a restlessness. It's a glass half empty versus half full. I think because like they always get pissed off that they're get, they know they're going to get eaten up by the competitors. So yeah. they always need to be <coughs> yeah. Do you think Steve Jobs thought he was really that good? Or do you think he was a little paranoid? Like put him on the couch, right? 800 bucks an hour at the shrink. What do you think we find? Security or insecurity? Insecurity, okay, which is a kind of cousin to chronic discontent. So it's about drive and it's about the relentless pursuit for the next right answer and it's about never being satisfied and all those kind of things. So um, those leadership defined in those terms is a, is a pretty scarce thing. Yeah. Doug, is that why you think the superhero leaders are now <coughs> extinct? Because to have that charisma and superhero persona, you need to have the security in yourself to present that? Sure, sure. Look at all the traditional great leaders. What do they look like? How do they act? Not a hair out of place. Not a speech that isn't scripted. Not a speech delivered without a teleprompter. Okay? Not with, you know, a, your typical CEO of a Canadian company would have six to eight public relations people helping them. Helping them look what? Controlled. In charge. How the hell can you be controlled and in charge in a world that's uncontrollable and you can never be in charge of? It's Muggs game. You can't do it. Don't waste your time. Instead, do what? And if you can't control the circumstances, if you're not smart enough to know the answers, if your competitors can sideswipe you, at any moment, if that's the world we live in, and I will suggest to you it has been since January 6, 1991, and it's only gotten worse, then you gotta be different. And what have you gotta be? Let me give you another way to think about it. In order to play classical music and to be considered a great classical pianist, what is the expectation of you? That you will play the piano exactly like Beethoven wrote it. Exactly. That's the world that we used to live in. That predictable, programmatic world. You grew up, you came up through floor one, two, three, four, five. You got on the mahogany roll by following the rules. You played classical music. Well, I kind of like a different metaphor. I kind of like jazz. Because I look at the environment and I say, we're not living in a classical environment. We're living in a jazz environment. What are the principal components of a great jazz musician? Imagination and improvisation. Now just ask yourself, look at the world. What suits the times best? Classical music, note by note, exactly the way it was prescribed, or improvise and imagine. Make your own decision. I've made mine. It's just, it just is what we need to be. So therefore, the character of the leader changes, and the leader needs to be a much more relaxed, experienced, repertoire type person who's prepared to make it up on the go. Make it up on the go because there is no one right answer. And I'm going to stand up at the board meeting or in the shareholders meeting and tell you I'm so smart that I know what's going to happen two years, three years, five years, ten years down the road. I'm not that smart. What I can tell you is I'm a leader who can jive and move and shift and we can get a whole big organization doing that. Then we have value created. Do you think that over the next, I don't know, 15, 20, 25 years, there's going to be more leaders like young leaders like Mark Zuckerberg, things like yes, that? that absolutely. Just, explode out of nowhere and create these massive companies. That's why I think there's a great economic value in young leaders. But what the young leaders, in my view, as the dinosaur, have to do is broaden their experience repertoire. Hang out with different people. Do different things. Be non-traditional. Build your own brand 
not by being the same, but by being remarkably different. And the more different you are, bad English, the more value you will be in a chaotic, unpredictable world. Think about it. You don't have to be a London School of Economics grad to understand that the world has changed. Take advantage of it. But that means a different script. That means jazz, not classical music, in my view. Just another thought on those, you know, there's a, there's a feeling that, that the senior leaders in an organization, they're the ones that should have the, uh, the aim, the strategy, and the vision. Well, let me tell you something. Most of them ain't good at it. What are they good at? What do you think most leaders spend their time? Strategy or execution? Execution. Why, why would a good leader be down in the weeds? as opposed to up in the clouds. Strategy is up in the clouds. Why do leaders default down to being in the weeds? That's what they're comfortable at. Because they can look good. You can turn the wrench and feel really good. I know how to do that. Oh, I used to be the VP sales at Labatt's. I know how to do that. But I don't know how to have strategy looking forward in a different world. But man, you give me a chance and I need an adrenaline rush, I'll get down in the weeds with you instantaneously. Because that stuff I know, I'm comfort food, that's pablum. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that's changing. 